Good evening, guys. We're going to start talking about Chapter 2, Section 3, Biogeography. Um, Biogeography, if you break down the word, bio actually means life. Geo means earth, and graphy means the description of. So basically, we're looking at the study of life here on Earth and how um, the continents have shaped and changed the Earth. Um, what I want you guys to understand, we're going to start talking about some concepts and theories. Okay? Theories are things you guys need to understand. doesn't mean you have to believe them, but you just need to understand the theory that scientists use to explain parts of science. So the first one is we're going to talk about continental drift. This theory is based on one factor that has affected how species are distributed in the motion of Earth's continents. So basically the theory talks about the continent once being one complete piece together, and they have since drifted apart. So the process of continental drift is slowly moving of the continents. So about 225 million years ago, they were actually one landmass known as Pangaea. You've probably heard about this before and learned about Pangaea before. So we're just going to kind of continue talking about this theory and go a little bit more in depth. Um, so we're going to talk about how the continental drift theory has caused isolation for organisms. So you have to look at the koala bear that is in Australia. You only find koala bears in Australia because they become isolated. That little island has broken off and it has caused them to be away from everything else. So, means of dispersal is important here. This is how organisms move from one place to another, and it's called dispersal. There's three ways in which organisms are dispersed. Wind, water, and living things, or humans. Okay? So these are the three ways organisms can be displaced. Okay? You have to know these three dispersal methods. Wind, water, living things, or humans. Okay? So we're going to put wind and water together because they're very similar. They're, the ocean is a huge landmass that doesn't stop landmass, body of water that doesn't stop flowing. It continues to flow. Same with wind. Nothing really stops wind. It continues to go around the world. So small plants and organisms need assistance to move from place to place. Things like spiders, tiny seeds. These things use wind and water to disperse them. When can be um, dispersed seeds, which is the seeds, not seeds. Um, the spores of fungi, tiny spiders, and small light organisms. So what happens is it causes them to pick up and blow. Strong winds blow them forever until they get stuck somewhere or the wind kind of subsides and it falls to the ground. Water is also going to transport small objects such as, such as coconuts and leaves. So some islands will have similar organisms on it if they are in close relationship to each other because what happens is that they were going to wash up on a new island. So small organisms get a free ride to a new home on top of floating rafts, such as leaves, bark, different um, other debris that's in the water. So wind and water can move organisms. The other one is other living things. Organisms can be dispersed from other living things. Think about it. When you walk through the woods, you sometimes pick up little birds and other seedlings on your clothes. You pick them off, they fall in your yard, you have now dispersed that living thing to a new area. Um, another one, birds. They eat things, dispose of their waste in other areas, and your waste can contain seeds and other um, extra waste that can cause organisms to be dispersed in other areas of the world. So they can actually um, attach to fur and other animals as well. Humans, we transport things around the globe, sometimes intentionally, like my grandmother, who likes to take things she shouldn't from one country to the other. Like fruits, you shouldn't export because little tiny bugs can be in those fruits, and it can actually cause problems in other countries. So transporting of certain foods is actually not allowed, and you can get a lot of trouble for doing that. Um, when people were settling in America, they brought over species, crops, and animals so they could establish farms. Uh, really kind of a neat story that I found in my family was that they used to sow in the wheat into their coats and line their coats with wheat so when they came to America they had a crop to grow. And that's where a lot of the red wheat comes from in Kansas is from the actually the Germans migrating from Germany. Um, these new species that are brought into another environment are known as exotic species. So they're exotic because they're not actually from that original area. When we think of exotics, sometimes we think of giraffes and zebras. 
so those are not indigenous to our area. But exact species can be things like dandelions. They were not indigenous to our area. They were actually brought over from the immigrants. Excuse me. Limits to dispersal. Okay, there's three things that are going to limit the dispersal of species. One is a physical barrier, competition, and climate. Physical barriers are barriers such as water, mountains, deserts. These are hard bodies of land that are hard and difficult to cross. Water, not everybody can swim very well. Mountains get cold. Temperatures are um, really low in the tops of mountains. Not to mention air pressure decreases. Deserts, hot, dry, vast, not a lot of water. So islands and areas separated from other continents are barriers to organisms being dispersed as well. Organisms that are stuck and surrounded by a body of water that don't swim, they're going to get stuck there and they can't be dispersed to other areas. Australia is a huge example of this. They have a lot of organisms there because they become isolated. Competition is when organisms enter a new area. They must compete for resources with other species there. So here we have competition again. We talked about competition in Chapter 1. Species are going to compete for things to survive. So if you bring an exotic species into an area, they are going to compete with the already existing organisms there to establish themselves. And, just like we talked before, the strongest will survive. So competition becomes a, a barrier to dispersal because ex existing species can become replaced by these new exotic species. Climate is the other one. Climate can limit dispersal because only certain organisms can live in an area. You have organisms that adapt in a, to an area and they're best suited for that area and climate because that's what they need to survive. So if they don't adapt and change, then the climate can actually kill them off. Continents that contain large grassy plains typically have organisms that have occupied niches of large grazing animals. So you have to think about this as well. If you have large grassy plains, you're going to have these large organisms that need and thrive on grasses. Okay? They're not going to thrive in a desert because they don't have the grass and the things that they need. Let's go out this picture. I'm going to blow it up a little bit. Make it easier for you guys to see here. Okay? You have these different levels. It looks like a mountain. As you move up, you increase and kind of decrease the amount of organisms available. Here in a desert, you don't have a lot of producers, so you don't have a lot of organisms that are going to live and thrive in this area. If you find a grassland, an oak wooden land, you're going to have a good climate that allows a lot of producers, which is going to attract a lot of different organisms. As you go further up the mountain, it's going to decrease the amount of organisms available. Okay, so these climates can really affect how many, where an organism lives. So, if you have any questions, please see me. I'll see you in the morning.